Hi, I'm Lucy, and I'm totally not a robot. And this is a Raspberry Pi 5. More precisely, it is a Raspberry Pi 5, with the official active cooler installed, which is very good, because this is the first Raspberry Pi model that runs so hot that it effectively can't be used without a cooler. That's why it is also the first model that comes with a dedicated fan header, so you don't have to rely on the Pi's PWM pins and user space applications for controlling the fan. So let's quickly unplug this and have a look at what the connector looks like. Everything's tiny, but it's clearly four pins, which is interesting, because regular PWM case fans also use a four-pin connector, so I'm wondering if it is in fact possible to connect any off-the-shelf fan to a Raspberry Pi 5. And the answer is of course no, mainly because the vast majority of case fans run at 12 volts, while the Raspberry Pi 5 only provides 3.3 and 5. But not all is lost, because sometimes it is possible to get a 5-volt variant of a fan, such as this Noctua NFA 4x10 PWM 5-volt fan. It does indeed have a 4-pin connector, but as you can imagine, it doesn't quite fit. So let's actually start by having a look at the documentation for both interfaces, to check whether the 4 pins are actually the same, and bail out quickly if they aren't. Let's start with the case fan. I think this'll do, and so we can see that the 4 pins are, ground, 12 volts, which for our 5 volt fan will of course be 5 volts, then sense, sometimes also called TAC, for tachometer, and finally control, or PWM. That's pretty straightforward, so next I want to check the Raspberry Pi 5 fan header. This might be slightly trickier to find, but I think the official Raspberry Pi docs is a good reference, so here it is. And look at that, it has 5 volts, PWM, ground, and TAC, of course Raspberry Pi being Raspberry Pi, in a different order, but I think I can deal with that. And there is one more important piece of information here, the documentation says that the connector is a 4-pin JST-SH, which is good to know when looking for an adapter. But unfortunately if there is an adapter that goes directly from the Raspberry Pi 5 fan header to the regular 4-pin case fan header, I wasn't able to find it. But as I was looking, I've noticed that the same 4-pin JST-SH connector is used by SparkFun, and they call it Queek, spelled Q-W-I-I-C. And fortunately, I was able to get this, Queek to 4-jumper wires adapter, which I hope will do. Let's see if it fits. Cool, it looks like it does, so now I need to figure out how to connect the 4-jumper wires to the fan. And you can kind of see that the fan's wires are color-coded, but here you must absolutely resist the temptation to match the colors, and do as the documentation says, otherwise you'll have a bad time. So pin 1 on the desktop fan header is ground, which is pin 3 on the Pi 5 header. And of course, the Pi header is upside down, pin 1 is at the bottom, so I need the third pin from the bottom, which in my case is blue. Next, 5 volts, pin 1 on the Pi 5, in my case, black. Then tack, pin 4 on the Pi 5, which for me means yellow. And what remains is PWM, which should be pin 2 on the Pi 5, and indeed, that's where the remaining red wire goes. So unless I've messed something up, that should be it. Let's plug in an SD card, fire it up, and see if the fan works. And look at it go. I call that a success. But now of course, I've lost the fan on the active cooler, I have nowhere to connect it to. So let's try to do something about it. And since the active cooler is now effectively just a giant heatsink, I can as well replace it with a bigger one, so let's start by ripping it off. It's only held by a couple plastic push-through pins, so if I turn the pie to the other side, and press the sides of the clips back towards the center, it should fall off. But it looks like I might need a slight amount of force.
And there it goes. So here I have a Naked Pi 5, you can see it's a 4 gig model, and I've also gotten this, a quote unquote, heatsink case. It's manufactured by Edatech, a company I've never heard of, but it's apparently more popular in places that are not Europe, so hopefully it'll do. The bottom has a giant thermal pad, that supposedly the board will be sitting on, so let's see how it fits. Nice and comfy, now let's add the top. And there it goes. Everything is held together with four screws, and of course, they are hex-headed, because why the hell not? But at least they give me the key, so let me quickly use it to secure everything. And this is the complete heatsink case. As I understand, it is supposed to be used just like this, which I find hard to believe, so I actually want to fire it up and see how it performs. But I must admit one thing, I've already executed one performance test. Right before removing the active cooler, I've actually plugged it back in, and ran one of my favorite CPU tests, downscaling the Big Buck Bunny movie from native to full HD. I've shown this test in detail in a couple previous videos, so here I'll just quickly run through it. It did it in a bit over an hour, and the temperature held pretty much constantly around 65 degrees, with the maximum I've seen being 67.8. And I have to admit, the result is a tiny bit worse than I expected, but I'll still use it as a baseline for comparing the performance of different coolers on the same device. So now back to the heatsink case, let's power it on and do the same. You can immediately see that there is no fan reading this time, because there is no fan connected. The idle temperature is also 10 degrees higher, so let's see how it performs. Okay, 61 minutes and 20 seconds, so in fact only 40 seconds slower compared to the active cooler, that's actually quite impressive. But to be fair, in this case the temperature has reached all the way up to lower 80s, I think the highest I've noticed was 83.7. Towards the end, I've tried touching the heatsink, and it was so hot it actually burned me. I'm not sure it would be able to start a fire, but I would certainly not recommend running the Pi 5 like this, especially unattended. So let's unplug everything, and try something different. Or actually, you know what, one more thing. Let me just plug the Noctua fan in, and just let it rest on top of the heatsink, something like this. With the fan spinning, I would expect the results to get better. That's interesting, still 20 seconds slower than the active cooler, but this time the temperature never even reached 60 degrees, and the fan never spun faster than 50% so it feels like I'm making progress. I can always tweak the curve later, with device tree parameters. But now, let's move forward. I couldn't resist, and 3D printed a fractal North Pi case, which didn't go 100% smoothly, but in the end I've managed. If you want to make your own, I do have a video about that. So here it is fully assembled, I was hoping to match the Noctua colors, but as you can see, neither is even close. But it is what it is. Now, if I undo the front panel, you can see that the case has slots for two 40mm fans, which should go in something like this. But wait, so far I only have a single fan, so I need to grab another one. And of course, as it is, I don't have anywhere to plug the second fan to, so I'll also need a Y splitter. Let's replace the fan with the splitter. That went well, so as you can see, 
Now I can plug in two fans, no problems at all. One thing to keep in mind with Y splitters is that there is always a primary port with all four pins exposed and a secondary port missing the tack pin because the board doesn't know there are two fans plugged into a single header and can only read the speed from one of them. But that's not a problem, let's plug the two fans in, arrange everything so that you can see it on the camera and do a test run. One question that you might ask is that with another fan, the power consumption will essentially double, so will the Pi 5's header be able to cope with that? And honestly, I have no idea, I wasn't able to find any electrical specs for the interface, but the Noctua fans are not that power hungry, running at just 0.35 watts each, so even though the pins are tiny, I don't think that would melt them or anything. Let's just try and see. Look at them go. I think that's a success. So with that confirmed, let me try to install everything inside the case. And of course, I'll have to disassemble it first, to get better access to everything. I want the fans to blow inside, and if you ever struggle with the orientation, each fan should have arrows on it, that show which way it rotates, and which way it blows the air, hopefully the camera can pick it up. So in my case, the air will go this way, and that's why I'll install the fans front side up. But here's a problem, it's quite a tight fit, and I don't think I'll be able to fit everything together with the cables routed to the sides, so let's see if I can free them. It was a bit of a struggle, but in the end I've managed. Let's check if it helped. And it looks like it did indeed, all the holes now align nicely, so the only thing remaining is to grab some fan screws and mount the fans onto the case. There they are, a nice fit, no cables interfering anywhere, I think my plan worked. But I'm nowhere near done. Now I'll have to install the Pi 5 inside the case, and somehow cable manage everything. To be clear, for cable management, I hope to simply jam everything into the gap below the Pi, but honestly, I'm starting to get a bit worried about that, it's quite a lot of cables with the two fans, Y splitter, and the GPIO adapter. Nevertheless, let's start by mounting the Pi. And the plan here is to reuse half of the heatsink case, get rid of the bottom heatsink, keep the top one, and screw it directly into the case. Hopefully that works. Well, it almost does, but it looks like the heatsink and the back panel interfere. Let me try without the back panel and deal with that later. Yeah, that fits now. I'll keep the back panel off for now, it would be possible to screw it in by force, but it would certainly not be happy. You can see that everything else fits nicely, and here you can even see my cable management gap, which I'm getting more and more concerned about. Let me try to run the fan cables under the Pi, and see if it works. That's actually not bad, I think I can now screw the front panel in. And with that done, let's see if the bars fit, there should be just enough clearance to get around the fans. And indeed, that seems to work nicely, so let me screw it in as well. So that's the front dealt with, let's now run the fan cables. And with everything connected, I'll add the side panel, and see if I can jam all the remaining cables under the Pi. Damn, I've messed up, I need to run everything underneath. Yeah, that works but now I've forgotten in which order the pins go, and instead of consulting the docs, I'll cut the video here, and watch the footage. A few moments later. Okay, blue, black, yellow, red, there it goes.
Now let's see if I can completely hide all the cables under the pie. Well, far from perfect, but I'd say it'll do. So now, let's add the side panel, and I'm still thinking about screwing the back panel in by force as well, but I think I'll leave it open, at least initially. But let's do one last test, let me quickly remove the front bars, and confirm that both fans do indeed spin, and that my cable management has not cut any contacts. And it looks like everything is working perfectly, so let's put everything back together, wire it up, and run the benchmark, to see if all this struggle was even worth it. Well, 61 minutes and 43 seconds, that's the worst result so far, which is weird, because the temperature never went above 67.8, on par with the active cooler. But now, let me install the back panel, and see if it gets even worse. It's certainly not happy, but so far it holds, so let's do this quickly. And surprise surprise, no difference at all, there are enough holes in the back panel to let the air through. I think that's enough tests, and I want to emphasize here, that even though the difference between the fastest and the slowest time is over a minute, it is still less than 5% overall, which at least for me, means that all the results are equivalent. The only thing that really stands out, is the temperature spike to over 80 degrees, with no fan at all. One obvious question that comes to mind, is whether the same will work on the CM5 IO board. The fan header should be the same, so let's try that and see. And yes, that seems to work perfectly fine, it's just that the fan is apparently trying to take off, as it is not secured to anything. But now, let's power this off, and have a look at the CM4 IO board, will that work as well? Obviously, the fan header is different. If I remove the adapter, the fan connector does fit, but please bear in mind that this is a 5 volt fan, but the header on the CM4 IO board is 12 volts, so even though everything physically fits, in this case you should use a 12 volt fan, which means you can't simply share fans between the CM4 and CM5 IO boards. Let me disassemble this before I accidentally power it on. And just for completeness, I'll run the benchmark on the CM5, with the fan on top of the official passive cooler, just as you've seen it a few moments ago. In the unboxing video, I've already tried this with the heatsink only, and inside the official case with no heatsink at all, and the results were not very impressive, at 63 and 69 minutes respectively. But with the heatsink and the Noctua fan at the same time, it's done it just under 61 minutes, pretty much on par with a full-sized Pi 5 with an active cooler. And with that, I think I can call this exercise a success. So let's summarize what I've learnt. First, you can absolutely connect case fans to a Raspberry Pi 5, assuming you're able to get or build an adapter for the fan header. Second, it is technically possible to run a Raspberry Pi 5 passively cooled, with no fan at all, but it's probably not a good idea. Third, if properly cooled, the CM5 can achieve similar performance to the full-sized Pi 5. And last but not least, tinkering with hardware is a lot of fun, you should go and try it yourself, 